back after like a week long or maybe two weeks long of, of not recording i'm finally here new new uniform here uh it's a school uniform same same markers but today we have a different lecture in fact i think i'm gonna be doing two lectures today or maybe i'm gonna do one today and then do the next tomorrow so the primary focus of today's morning, or this morning, this, um, is to uh, prove that the letter A comes before the letter B. So we all know in preschool, or we're all taught in preschool, how the alphabet goes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, P, U, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. <sighs> okay, but our teachers never specified that that is the actual order of things. It's just a convention, a, an intuitive way for us to remember all the members of the alphabet, at least the English alphabet. Um, the Tagalog alphabet includes a couple more, and the Latin alphabet also includes a couple more. And maybe the Germans, the European languages also include other letters, but we're gonna focus on the English alphabet so letters A through Z. So what our teachers neglected to tell us or neglected to do was formalize the order of notion and formally tell us why it is as such. Now you can tell me, oh, well, it's, it's an obvious thing, right? It's obvious that uh, the order of the alphabet is what it is. And it's just an intuitive like notion that you, you just know, you don't prove. But what I aim to do in this video is to mathematically formalize the um, alphabet and establish lexographical ordering via order theory and uh, set theory. So I just came up with the proof yesterday. So it also uses some um, if I'm not mistaken, the proof also uses one of the piano axioms. And the piano axioms are a bunch of axioms that uh, well, Piano himself, a mathematician, uh, made to formalize and construct the natural numbers. So numbers zero up to positive infinity. That's the natural numbers. Uh, in fact, maybe sometimes zero is not included. But I guess for this lecture, we will be considering the natural numbers without zero. So let's start this proof or this uh, construction. So, lemma. I wonder if the, is the marker still here? Oh yes, it's still here. I can't use this. It's, I saw it, it, it writes pretty good. So lemma. A comes before B. And so let's write here proof. Proof. Okay. So the first part of our proof is to construct, uh, or the goal of the proof uh, is to construct. The ordered pair. The ordered pair A, B, C, dot, 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 X, Y, Z. Or you can you can write it like this using angle brackets. I'm gonna use angle brackets. So the goal is to construct this ordered pair. Now we don't know just yet. We don't know that A becomes A comes before B here. We just assume or this is a goal that we want to go with, right? So to prove that A comes before B, we need to establish some ordering or we need to formalize, as I said, formalize the notion of lexicographical ordering or alphabetical ordering. So we need to construct this ordered set out of an unordered set of all letters from our English alphabet. So, first, um, let's math cal 
a equal to the unordered pair a b dot 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 y z. So all 26 letters of the English alphabet. So, all right. And then, oh, and, okay, I'm just gonna erase this small thing in the side. So, and, 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 23 or 26, the first, N star, N star 26, because N star, or N, is, is just Z, but plus all the positive integers, right? And N star is equal to N without zero. So N without zero, that's N star. So we don't want a zeroth place. We want to start with the first place, the second place, third place, and all that. Okay, and N26 star, the first 26 elements of the natural numbers, or N, without zero. So we start at one. Take the ordered pair, or take the Cartesian product, product of A, or mathematical A, and our n star 26, such that, such that this uh, Cartesian product that takes a cross n star 26 and then maps them onto a, well, a new set, which I will call E. Okay? Uh, is characterized via as a cross n star 26 equals this set. So the set of ordered pairs now. So a assigned with 1, b assigned with 2, the dot dot dot, ellipsis to show that, because I can't write all of them down, uh, y would be uh, 5 and then Z 26 okay I just want to note note Z is not the integers so Z is just the letter Z in this case not the integers okay so now that we constructed our uh, ordered set here now now this becomes an ordered set this is essentially this one over here already because we say oh well um, a is assigned to the number one and so now what I want to say or what I want to call these numbers now that we assign to these letters the order number or the uh, position number so the number that dictates the position of each of these guys um, inside our ordered set so now a is the first member or first element B is the second element, C is the third element, and then, you know, Y is the 25th element, and then Z is the 26th element. So that's what we're trying to say with this set over here, this Cartesian product. And um, the reason why I specify directly what the Cartesian product is, is because I received the concern that when you take a Cartesian product, you do want to consider also that we take, we take A and then we also pair it with 2. But we don't want that. So what I did was specify it. We identified what exactly we're doing here with this Cartesian product. So this is, think of this over here as a definition. So this is a definition now. Instead of, uh, 
you know, um, just a conventional uh, Cartesian product we specified it. Okay. Okay. Now, okay, um, well, you, you can say that this is it and then your job is done. But now, what we want to do is to reinforce our notion that this is an ordered set by making it a total ordered set. So now we're delving into order theory and assigning and equipping this with an order. So I'm going to say, let's say that this product between A cross N star 26 is equal to E here. So E, E now is this ordered pair. Uh, rather the underlying set of this order pair because we're not quite done yet and we're not, gonna, we're not done with uh, denoting this. So I'm just going to call this E here. So I'm going to equate this to E or math BBE. Okay, dot. Uh, so we can start with the next proof or next part. Okay. Establish ordering <coughs> via the map which I will call pre uh, pre equi pre -ic. that's the symbol in LaTeX I don't precisely know what's the name of this but yeah it's a general way of saying less than equal to because when we s when we talk about ordering we wanna um, it's a more abstract definition it's not like precisely lexicographic order like lexicographic order like um, one thing comes before the next one what we want to do is show that any two elements can be compared Wait. so there's, there's now we map the cross um, between e and itself the or e2 so this one is taken to on two now e this? equipped with such an operator. <laughs> so now, what we're saying is that two of these, two elements or two subsets from these guys can be compared. So A can be compared with B, B com can be compared with C, C can be compared with A, A can be compared with Z, Z can be compared with G, and so on and so forth. Um, so, now what we want to say is that uh, note um, so that L1 and L2 be letters with respective ordering numbers N and M okay so if M is an immediate successor of N, L2 is immediately, um, L2 is, Im is the immediate successor of um, L1. Or we say that L1 comes before L2. Because we know that, well, N is simply, N comes before M, and these dictate the positions of both of these letters inside our ordered set. So therefore, that would be it. So, um, we can say that these two are comparable, right? Because we can show that one is less than the other and one is greater than the other. So there is some notion of uh, total ordering now in our set. And so according to the piano axioms, every number or every natural number, well, since n and m here are, are order numbers, they must be members of n. Uh, so n and m must be elements of this. And because they're elements of n, they always have an immediate successor. So N always has an immediate successor, and M always has an immediate successor. But because we're only dealing with the naturals, we're only dealing with whole numbers, and that they don't have any immediate successors that are part of the rationals. So they don't have immediate successors that are immediately um, expressed as fractions or decimals. Because we're not dealing with R here, but we're dealing with N. So, all right, so we have established that M is greater than is, um, precisely uh, the successor of N. Okay, so 
Once we're done establishing this ordering map that preserves this kind of thing, so this order parallel one is less than and if and only if n is less than n. Okay, so that so we're then establishing the ordering of the map by by this crucial rule. What we do is just equip our map VBE. I left my idea. What? With this special map, uh, and then that ends the proof practically. And there. So we just write our box, and then shake it so that we complete the proof. And there. There we have it. Now note this very special one, okay? And actually, uh, we're not done with the proof, actually. We're not done with the proof just yet. Uh, okay, once we're done equipping you with this special map, um, we we'll just substitute, substitute L1 with A and substitute L2 with B, substitute N with 1 and M with 2. Sub, uh, sub L1 equals A, L2 equals B, N equals 1 and M equals 2. And so when we substitute this, this this statement over here, this note holds true, or this corollary holds true, and since we input, uh, when we input A and B here, it immediately holds under our given proof of our lemma. So once we, sh once we plug this in, we're essentially saying now that the position of A precedes the position of B. So therefore, A comes before B. Proof is complete. So, one final thing here, one final order pair, A1 is less than A, uh, I mean B, B2, B2, <coughs> there, according to this note, which still holds true under the piano axioms and our initial assumptions. Okay, now we made a lot of assumptions in this proof because um, especially here though, because there is, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I know, there is no known partition product that takes specific elements from one set and then, and then they freaking um, put it together with other elements from another set. There's no specification for that. So, or there's no specific partition product for that. So, what we had to do was just specify or define the partition product that we wanted to do here. So, um, I know this is a very this is a very convoluted say of way what well, A comes before B, but well, it's it's one way of rigorously proving that A comes before B. And um, using induction, one can just say well, one can do the same for other letters, like say um, G comes before H, or Y comes before Z, or uh, T comes before U. You can prove that also. You just need to substitute the necessary values. Like uh, substitute n for 25, and then n for 26, l1 for y, and l2 for z. <coughs> and I, I know there's other ways to go on about proving that a comes before b, uh, but this is just my way of proving it. Okay, so for I guess for the next lecture, which is probably tomorrow or maybe not five time, it's gonna be um, not with math, but we're gonna go and return to my aerospace engineering courses or my general courses and we're gonna talk about the different types of propulsion used by uh, vehicles. So solid propulsion and liquid uh, engine propulsion and when we do tackle liquid engine propulsion we're gonna talk about the different types of um, cycles. So open cycle, closed cycle, uh, uh, staged, full flow staged and um, if I remember correctly uh, Cycler, uh, a bit mind blocked. Um, expander cycle. There you go. <laughs> expander. Um, and yeah, I, this, it has nothing to do with this right now. But I believe that's going to be the next lecture. Um, and I guess. Uh,
I'm really sorry guys for my um for my hiatus like <laughs> we had the SEM break for my school so that means I was I didn't get access to a whiteboard, a decent whiteboard. I couldn't just lecture at home because we don't have any whiteboards there. Um so here it is. Take it all in. I do have the paper. um I think I'm gonna make like a very very short paper. Maybe it's just it's just gonna be the proof itself. Um but I'll post in the description probably. <coughs> so there's the proof. Um, if I made any mistakes in this proof, like say it in the comments below. Um, because I'm very unsure about how I made this proof. Like maybe the ordering part is unnecessary. Maybe I don't really need to do the last part. But I, I also felt the need to do it because like we need to reinforce our notion of order. And that order is not necessarily just which items come before other items, but also the fact that some items or all of, or any two items or any three items or more items can be compared to each other by their position or whatever inside the set. So I'm not gonna stop further. Um, that's it for this lecture. I'll see you guys for the, ne the next one.